The story begins in the midst of Link's nightmare, a dream consumed by darkness and fire. As the image of the trifle shattered before his eyes, the green-clad boy faced an entity of pure darkness that loomed over him, glaring at the sword-wielding lad with malice in its eyes. And just as the scream of a maiden was heard in the distance, everything went dark. Link was woken from his slumber by Gali, the young son of Kakariko's blacksmith, who told him to wake Link up as he had always slept as usual, not turning up for work, which had made his master very angry. Following Gali back to the workshop, Link ran into the captain of the royal guard, who thanked the blacksmith for his newly crafted shield before heading back to Harrow Castle. As the blacksmith told Link off for not arriving on time, his wife quickly realized the careless captain had left behind his new sword, and tasked Link to deliver it to him back at Harrow Castle. Talking to our guard at the front gate, Link learned that the captain hadn't made it back to the castle, but knew he intended to visit the sanctuary north of the castle before returning to his duties. At the sanctuary's door, Link met with Damper, the gravedigger, and the priest's daughter, Ceres, who offered to bring him the captain from inside the sanctuary. As Link talked to Damper, waiting for Ceres to come out with the captain, the doors of the sanctuary suddenly closed shut. Unable to open the doors, Damper told Link of a secret passage beneath one of the graves that led straight into the sanctuary instructing him to use the captain's sword to defend himself from the many creatures lurking in the dark. Making it within the sanctuary, Link learned the reason of all the commotion. A mysterious sorcerer named Yuga, who claimed he had come seeking nothing more than perfection, had attacked the priest and turned the captain into a painting, plastered on one of the walls of the sanctuary itself. Using his magic, and enthralled by Sarah's beauty, he turned the young priestess into a framed portrait. Yuga then noticed Link, defiantly standing at the end of the corridor. The wounded priest, unable to stand, urged the young blacksmith to run away, as not even the captain stood a chance against the dark sorcerer. Yuga taunted Link, however, who charged at the mage with sword in hand, as the sorcerer evaded his attack by merging into the wall causing Link to crash into it and lose consciousness. Exiting the wall, Yuga scoffed at Link's pathetic attempt to stop him, kicking the unconscious body aside before leaving the sanctuary with the portrait of Ceres. Link woke up within his bed back at home, where he was greeted by a mysterious figure wearing a pink hood in the shape of a rabbit, who introduced himself as Rabio, a traveling merchant who had found him within the sanctuary and took him back to an empty house, unaware it was actually Link's own home. Ravi asked Link if he could stay at his house for a few days, as he had nowhere else to go for the time being, handing him his bracelet as a thanks for his hospitality. And upon learning of what happened early in the sanctuary, he urged Link to report what happened to Princess Zelda, so something could be done about it. In the castle gate, a guard mocked Link's wild claims, and as he continued to disregard the young blacksmith, Princess Zelda's attendant, Impa, allowed Link entry into the castle to meet with the princess. Impa took Link to Princess Zelda, who recognized the boy from her dreams, learning Link was having the exact same dreams as of late, perhaps a premonition of events that were to come. Horrified by Link's accounts of what transpired in his sanctuary, Zelda granted him the pendant of courage, a special charm kept in the care of the royal family for generations, and tasked him to seek Sahasrala, the wise elder of Kakariko village, as with his vast knowledge of the past, he would be able to help against the increasing threat of Yuga. After meeting with Sahasrala, and informing him of all that had happened in the sanctuary, he instructed Link to hurry to the Eastern Palace immediately, and warn his pupil, Osfala, of Yuga and his plans, as, not knowing of the serious threat of the situation, and hearing of rumors of a strange man lurking near the sacred temple, he sent his pupil to investigate, and feared he was now in danger to be captured by Yuga as well, for he, like Ceres, 
was a descendant of the seven sages who sealed Ganon in the distant past. Link met with Osvala at the entrance of the Eastern Palace, and despite his warnings, Sahasrala's overconfident pupil entered the temple underestimating Yuga's power. Link soon arrived at the heart of the temple, where he witnessed Osvala being turned into a painting by Yuga, and after facing off against the powerful mage, the dark sorcerer furiously turned into a painting to prevent any future interference, before leaving the palace to capture Princess Zelda next. However, as Link lost all hope of escape, Ravio's bracelet began to glow with a bright pink light, freeing Link from the wall. Unknowingly, Yuga had activated Ravio's bracelet with his magic upon imprisoning Link, allowing the hero to freely merge into walls just like Yuga. Upon exiting the palace, Link was greeted by Sahasrala, who quickly learned of Osvala's fate, and as Link told him of Yuga's plans to go after Zelda, they heard a loud noise in the distance. Fearing Yuga had already got to Princess Zelda, they both headed towards the castle, finding Yuga had created a barrier of dark magic around it, magic not even the powerful Sahasrala could break. Turning to the legend of old for guidance, the wise elder told Link of the Master Sword and the three pairs of virtue needed to become worthy of wielding it, yet Sahasrala feared they would be unable to obtain a blade, as he believed the pendant of courage to be within Haru Castle in Zelda's possession. Relieved to find out Link was gifted the pendant by Zelda, Sahasrala instructed the hero to find the two remaining pendants of virtue in order to claim the trifles and break the barrier. The pendant of wisdom, protected by the monstrous Margomil, found within the House of Gales in Lake Hylia, and the pendant of power, guarded by the fierce Moldom, atop the Tower of Hera located on Death Mountain. With all three pendants of virtue at hand, Link pulled the Master Sword from its pedestal within the Northern Lost Woods, allowing the hero to break the barrier surrounding Haru Castle. Facing Yuga, the wizard quickly escaped with the painting of Princess Zelda through a crack in a wall, leading the hero to the decaying parallel world of Loru. Within Loru Castle's throne room, Yuga used the seven paintings of the sage descendants to revive Ganon, merging with the demon king in order to obtain the trifles of power, transforming into a horrifying beast. As Yuga Ganon approached Link, he was stopped by the magic of Loru's princess, Hilda, who swiftly imprisoned the beast, yet her magic wouldn't hold forever. Hilda instructed Link to save the seven sages from the many temples of Loru, as only with their help would they be able to save both Hyrule and Loru from Yuga and Ganon. Traveling through the desolate world of Loru, Link made his way through the various temples hidden within the ruined kingdom, rescuing Osvala within the thief's hideout, locked up by the undead Stallblind, Irene within the desert palace, imprisoned by the spiny Saganaga, Gali within the dark palace, trapped by the beastly Gemasol King, Oren within the swamp palace, under the watchful eye of Argus. Impa within the turtle rock, guarded by the fiery Greenex. Roso within the ice ruins, protected by the icy Darkster. And Ceres within the skull woods, access to her blocked by the armored Knuckle Master. With all seven sages saved and returned to the chamber of sages within Hyrule's sacred realm, they combined their powers to grant Link the trifles of courage. Returning to Loru Castle, Link met with Hilda once again, who revealed to Link the reason of Loru's crumbling state. Loru, like Hyrule, was once a thriving kingdom with its own trifles. Many greedy individuals sought the golden power over the ages, plunging Loru into endless conflicts. However, instead of sealing the golden power away like Hyrule's sages, Hilda's ancestors destroyed the Triforce in its entirety, in an attempt to stop the unending wars. While it was done with good intentions, the people of Loru soon learned of their grave mistake, as without the source of order and stability that was the Triforce, 
the kingdom of Loru soon began to crumble. Wanting to save her kingdom from its imminent destruction, Hilda betrayed Link, stealing the truffles of wisdom from Princess Zelda and summoning Yuga to take the truffles of courage from Link. All this time, she was secretly plotting to obtain Haru's Triforce to save her beloved kingdom of Loru, disregarding Haru's fate. However, Yuga also betrayed Hilda and took the Travels of Wisdom from her, as with the full Triforce, he intended to rebuild the crumbling kingdom in his image. With the Travels of Power and Wisdom in his grasp, all that remained was the Travels of Courage that dwelled within the Hero of Hyrule. As Link faced Yuga, the portrait turned so that granted Link the Bow of Light, allowing the hero to force the demon turn Yuga out of the walls. And after a fierce battle, Yuga was destroyed. Zelda was freed from her painting, yet Hilda, desperate to save her kingdom and refusing to see reason, approached the Harulian princess and hero with the intention of taking their trifles pieces. All of a sudden, Ravio ran into the throne room and stepped between Hilda and the Harulian duo, revealing himself to be Link's Lorulian counterpart. Ravio explained that these sort of actions were identical to what led to their trifles being destroyed to begin with, and that by saving their kingdom from destruction, they would be dooming Hyrule to suffer Loru's fate. Realizing her mistake, Hilda promised to return Link and Zelda back to Hyrule safely, along with their trifles. Hilda led them to Loru's sacred realm, where a large slab stood in place of the sacred relic, a tombstone of sorts for the destroyed trifles, with a glowing crack emanating a golden light. It is through this crack that Hilda and Yuga felt the presence of Hyrule's trifles, which led them to form a plan to claim it as their own. Ravio, being a coward at heart, was too afraid to confront the powerful duo, and thus traveled to Hyrule to find a hero courageous enough to stop them. Using the remaining power of Ravio's bracelet, Princess Hilda sent Link and Zelda back to Hyrule through the slab's crack, causing the bracelet to shatter, destroying the only means of travel between both worlds. Link and Zelda would return to Hyrule's own sacred realm, where the complete Triforce rested atop a pedestal. Feeling sorry for Hilda and her kingdom, Link and Zelda touched the Triforce with a wish in mind, the desire to restore Loru's Triforce to end their despair. Back in Loru, the ground began to shake violently around them, as the stone slab glowed brighter and brighter before bursting into pieces. As Hilda and Ravio looked to the sky, three inverted golden triangles began to materialize before them, bringing tears of joy to the princess who could not believe what was happening before her. And as the rays of the Lurulian sun began to shine through the cleared clouds, order and peace were returned to Loru. Having saved both the kingdoms of Hyrule and Loru, Link returned the Master Sword back to its pedestal within the Lost Woods, where it came to rest once again, waiting patiently for the next incarnation of the hero to wield it. And that were the events of A Link Between Worlds. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to get notified of future uploads. Also, consider following me on Twitter and Instagram if you haven't already to stay in touch. This has been Sololo, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.